I have been home from the trail for just about three months now and I thought it would be a good time to do a check-in with you and let you know how things have been going. I've been home from the trail for just about three months now and I thought it would be a good time to do a check-in as far as how things have been going for me and I will try to do this probably at six months maybe at nine and twelve we'll see how things go uh, you might have an idea from my post hike depression video that things are not going great but actually they are they've definitely taken an uptick but I wanted to kind of share my experience for the the first three months so from when I first got home to the holidays to where I am now uh, just because it might be uh, informative for some of you who are planning a through hike to see what life might be like um, post trail. First of all, when I got home, it was right before Thanksgiving. It was Thanksgiving week, and I just really did not want to go out and see a lot of people. I had the feeling that other than my immediate family, people wouldn't really understand what I'd been through, and I didn't think I even really had the words to share what I'd been through. So when people asked me, I just said, no, it was an amazing experience, one of the best and most difficult things that I've ever done, and I just left it at that. And I pretty much ended up kind of cocooning at home for the first couple of months. And part of that was, I think, a bit of uh, post-trail blues, if you will. I don't want to go say post-trail depression. It wasn't full-fledged depression for sure. But it was just a bit of an adjustment for me, especially coming back at such a busy, busy time. Physically, I felt like I really needed to give my body a rest. When I was out on the trail and even when I was getting ready to come home from the trail, I thought, man, I'm going to be out there, I'm going to be hiking every week and I'm just going to keep going and keep going because uh, I felt great. But at the same time, when I got home, my feet hurt, my knees hurt, and I had a lot of residual pain, which I understand from other hikers is not that uncommon. In fact, some people are still dealing with that pain, you know, four, five, six months in. Thankfully. Uh, even though I was a complete slug and, and I physically laid on the couch and just didn't do much of anything for the first couple months, that pain finally abated. And I'm just now finally three months in really getting the urge to, to physically getting the urge to go out and hike. So my body is finally catching up with my brain a little bit. Some other things that were a bit of a shock to the system was just, and it's still an adjustment, realizing that having been on the trail for seven months and getting very minimal news by design, I did not want to be plugged into politics and TV and pop culture and all that kind of stuff. It's a little bit like um, just being out of the world, really. And so you come back and there's so much to adjust to in terms of catching up. And um, I didn't really want to catch up. I'm still kind of avoiding that. And I think one of the good things is that, you know, I used to watch a lot of um, news on TV and listen to talk radio and that sort of thing. And I just don't have a taste for it anymore. I don't want to hear people yelling at each other. I don't want to hear the discord. I'd much rather hear an intelligent discourse, differing opinions that are having really a substantive discussion. I don't want to hear people yelling at each other. Other. So I'm tuning out on that, opting out. As far as work, uh, I've mentioned a couple times that it's been a little bit of a challenge for me to get back in the groove financially, and I did come home with more debt than I wanted. Um, I prefer to live debt free, and I've been that way up until a couple years ago, and I plan to get back there as soon as possible. But I also knew that I needed to make some changes in my work. And one of the reasons I needed to make a change is because it has become very important to me to live more of my life outdoors. Financially, I need to arrange things in such a way that I can make income when I need it, I can save money when I need it, and then I can take time off when I need it. So I'm making changes in my business to shift from being, I do consulting work and, and coaching, and to shift from being very hands-on, very labor-intensive projects, to doing more online, more remote coaching, that sort of thing. So that's a pretty big shift in in terms of the business and I although I was just laying on the couch physically doing nothing I was working like a demon to get stuff done in terms of making changes in the business updating my website shifting my uh, offerings around and that sort of thing and I'm getting really close to a point where I can actually launch those changes so I'm very excited about that because I think even though I've had to be very patient from an income standpoint I think it's gonna make a big difference and get me to where I want to be over the next several months so I'm excited about that 
another uh, aspect of the income front, and this is not just income really, but almost more mindset, I decided to take a part-time job at a local outfitter. And that is because I wanted to stay in touch with people who love the trail as much as I do, people who love outdoor activities as much as I do, and unfortunately love my family to death. I mean, they are awesome, but they are not outdoor people. So I need to get my fix of friends and family and, and um, you know other people that like to be outside. My sister and brother, they, they are big outdoor people, so when I have the chance to get to Florida and do things with them, that's amazing. Um, so I'm just trying to figure out how to fill that need in my life and I thought okay working part-time in an outfitter particularly one because I live in it just north of Atlanta it, it's close to the trail relatively close to the trail a lot of through hikers will be passing through it'll give me a chance to talk to a lot of other people about their upcoming through hikes um, help people with gear decisions and you know I'm a gear geek I love my gear so that sort of thing I think is going to be very good for me mentally getting me out of the house since I am self-employed and I'm shifting to online work it, that can be kind of lonely and quiet sometimes so I'm excited about that and another bonus is that it is not a long-term position it's a temporary part-time position and then I should have the option of deciding at that point whether I want to continue or not but that brings me to my future plans I had initially really hoped that I could get back on the trail in March and here it is coming up on the end of February and I know that's not going to happen uh, partially financially partially because I mentioned my, my puppy is not doing well uh, my mother-in-law has Alzheimer's and her care is getting to be a bit of a challenge so that means that my husband may be having to travel back and forth to visit her things like that are going on and so it's just not a good time it's like it just feels like it's too soon for me to get back on, out on the trail but in the summertime, I do plan to get out and do the Maryland to Pennsylvania stretch that I have. It'll probably be about three weeks. And then I either right after that or maybe take a break. I might do one in June and one in August, but I'd like to jump up to Vermont and finish my miles there. And I have about 100 miles in Vermont. And I'm kind of thinking, even though I did start Vermont, it would be a lot of fun to do the long trail. So I am doing some research on that and considering, okay, should I, could I take the time to kind of backtrack a little bit and start the long trail at the beginning and just do the long trail, uh, not only where it overlaps with the AT, but also the way all the way up to Canada. So I'm giving some thought to that and I'm excited about it. And I'm also starting to think about the PCT. And when I started my AT hike, I said, this is a once in a lifetime deal for me. I don't think I'm ever gonna do any of the other trails. No desire to be a triple crowner. But once you spend as much time on the trail as I did, as any through hiker does, I think it just gets in your blood, it gets in your brain. And you have this, what I would call a real yearning to be not just outside, but to be living that lifestyle of, of through hiking and being out there. So. I'm really giving some careful thought to that. It's gonna take me a while to make a final decision um, because I do have some life things coming up like uh, college graduation for my daughter and potentially a wedding in the future, we'll see. Um, so those kind of things might make life sort of hectic in the next couple of years, but I would love to be able to do the PCT if I decide in uh, 2020 or possibly in 2021. Some other changes that I've noticed um, personally, kind of psychologically since I got back from the trail, um, and number one, this hit me right away and it was kind of shocking, is that my BS meter was off the charts. I've been a pretty tolerant person, but somehow I just, I think because life on the trail comes so easy and you, and you don't have a lot of resistance and so you don't deal with it so much. I mean, other than, you know, resistance of climbing a mountain, but nobody's standing in your way, nobody's giving you a hard time. And so when I came back and I encountered people that had that sort of a mindset, I was like, yeah, no, cut it off right now. We are not playing. <laughs> and I think that's a really good trait that I got. I'm much more, I think, direct and much more in tune with what I need. So um, that's, that's a good shift that I've seen. Another benefit that I gained is an increase in empathy. And I've always felt like I was a pretty empathetic person, but there was one particular area that I just did not comprehend. And that was what people with chronic pain are dealing with. And sometimes you meet somebody in your life who's just been dealing with pain for years and years and years and it colors their mindset and you're like, oh man, why can't they snap out of it? And you really wanna help them. I get it now. I totally get it after dealing with my foot issues for so long and reaching the point where they just got so deep in my brain that I couldn't think of anything else. It was totally coloring my worldview. And I just have so much more empathy for that. And I also, I would say, have more empathy for um, what some people do to deal with that. Not condoning drug abuse at all, but I know how easy it is for people to get addicted to painkillers and then it becomes a downward spiral from there. So I have an understanding for that that I didn't have before and I think that that's just um, hopefully made me a better person to be able to, to understand and empathize with the plight of 
some people who are dealing with things that I had never had to deal with myself. One other thing that I have been thinking about, and this is something some of my friends wanted me to jump on right when I got back, was writing a book. And I wrote a book a few years ago, a business book, and so I know what it takes to get it done, and I just, I wasn't ready. I mean, I thought about it a lot on the trail, and I thought, okay, what would I write about? I don't want write, to write just another you know, trail journal kind of book. There are lots of those out there. And I thought, what could I add in a book that would be helpful to other people that are planning a hike? And I'm still up in the air about that. And I'd really be curious to hear what you think. Is there, is there room out there for another book? Would you love to see a book from me? And if so, what would you like me to really cover? Uh, if you could help me make that decision with some input, I'd definitely appreciate it. So just pop your thoughts down in the comments and let me know as I mull over that decision. You know, I, I'm wondering, okay, what angle would I take and how would I approach it? So I would love your thoughts on that. Please, like I said, just, just comment down below and let me know. And then a final thought on, you know, adjusting to life after the trail is relationships. I was thinking about that this morning before I turned the camera on and I thought I can kind of see why more people are out on the trail when they're younger or, younger or single because when you're unencumbered, it's so easy. You don't have as much to deal with. But if you're in a situation, particularly like me, where your family is not outdoorsy, they don't understand what you're going through. They don't understand that, that yearning to get on the trail, why you have to be outside. Why can't you just hang around with them and go to the movies and go shopping and do all that kind of stuff, which is fun. But um, it, it's difficult because you have to find a way to sort of reach some common ground there with the people that you love, with your friends and family even if they don't support your hiking. That has been a little bit of an adjustment for me. I just, even in talking to my husband about my trip and giving him, you know, examples as we're having a conversation about, oh, when I was on the trail, this happened or that happened and trying to find that in a way that he can relate to that and so that he can kind of understand the experience that I've been through and, and how that's changed me because we've got 31 years of marriage under our belt, love him dearly, and we have always been our own people and done our own thing, but at the same time, you know, it would be a terrible thing for a through hike to come in between a relationship for anybody. Finding that common ground, maintaining that common ground, making that a shared experience uh, is not an easy thing. It's, it's a journey as much as the trail is a journey, so um, I'm just trying to be mindful of that and to understand that his experience of me being on the trail was a lot different than my experience of being on the trail. You know, he got to deal with bills and pets and work and all of that kind of stuff and he's completely and incredibly supportive but at the same time it was a different experience for him and if I decide to go again uh, it certainly would have to be with his blessing because you know he's in this game too and it's something that we're gonna both be um, be dealing with and in different ways and I would love for him to be a part of it and find a way for him to come along if he could if he wasn't um, embroiled and you know neck deep in work but we'll figure that out but it's definitely something to think about and you know it, it applies to not just your your partner but you know your your children your parents your friends all of those kind of things and finding ways to figure out how to articulate to them what the experience is like in a way that they can relate to and maybe inviting them into your journey somehow so that they can be with you. Anyway, those are my thoughts. I mean, it's been uh, it's been a challenging three months uh, since I got home. It's been an interesting and exciting time and I am actually right now feeling really, really good about the future. I'm really happy that I had some plans to get back on the trail as will firm up in the next few months and then really happy that I can keep doing this channel. So I appreciate you all watching. I appreciate the feedback. And uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please take a minute and click that button and also click the little bell so you'll get notified when I post my new videos. Take care and happy hiking.